when the mad titan is encroaching on your planet and you've got stones he wants it's time to assemble the mythwits the show dedicated to all things geek pop culture drenched in absurdity and coated with sarcasm every week we bring on an industry guest or somebody like will to talk about the ever-expanding geekiverse and to play a game with us we do our damnedest to be funny but there are no guarantees i am your host peter bryant and joining me this week is my co-host mike kafis hey everyone should go to my my uh, facebook page and check out my uh, picture of my unicorn fingering running thing did you see that that's funny. i did see that is that that's how you feel today that that was me it was chasing me around all day <laughs> and our guest this week is will conway hello, hello so will conway has published two works with a third the blade of oh boy Streya. Streya. Streya <laughs> to be released soon he has read high fantasy since an early age and the imprint of such is ineb is is such is no. inevitably indubitably 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 marked upon his own style. Uh, Will, uh, d not a long bio yet. Will's working on it. He's working on his bio. So welcome to the Mythwits, Will. Thank you. It's good to be here. Yeah. Uh, so we got the Infinity War coming up, and uh, right around the corner. Um, was it like two weeks? Is that right? Uh, it's a little bit longer than that. April twenty seventh. April twenty seventh. Okay. Right. It's right around the infinity corner. Oh, right, 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 right. So, Will is. I mean, Will is the biggest like Marvel fanboy person I know. I don't. I, I mean, I'm sure there, there's got to be somebody more, but but not that I know. And <laughs> uh, and so, um, Will's been watching all the Marvel movies back to back. To uh, well, not back to back. Like every was it once a week. Once a week, yep. Once a week. So well, you plan so this out? The, oh yeah, the first one was Iron Man on December thirty first. Right. Once a week, I've been watching leading up to that. That's how early I had to start to get them all in. Right. So, so he took this into consideration and decided I'm going to watch every one of these movies. Uh, you know, one one a week, and then you write like a little like write up on it, like your synops your synopsis on it. Uh, you know, kind of looking back up until we get there. Um, so I wanted you to come on and talk about the MCU. And uh, so, so hey, why don't you tell us, tell us a little bit about your journey and what you've learned about doing this the way you're doing it. Uh, so I guess it's just a, a little like format of how I'm doing it. What, what I'm doing is uh, introducing at the very top line, your road to infinity war number or whatever it is. Uh, I have the movie title. And I say how I think it ranks among the MCU movies because I've had a lot of my friends come up and be like, Will, I can't take your opinion seriously. You say every Marvel movie is the best movie ever made. So at least this way, they have some kind of uh, comparison to be like, all right, well, I like this movie and didn't like that one. So if it compares with the one I like, I might appreciate it. Uh, and then I have a ranking out of 10 of my personal bias. And honestly, none of them have been below like six, but you know, like you said, I'm a big Marvel fanboy. So what can I say? Right, right. Um, so after that, I go into like a short synopsis of a couple of just just notes that I want to share about the movie. Uh, and then I go into some of the bad things I thought about it, and then I, I end on some of the good things because you tend to remember, like, the last thing that you read about something. So I, I want to have the good ones at the end. Right. So that includes you, – you, you even give the first Hulk movie a six. Is you know, to understand that? I, I just... like that one a lot more than, like, anyone I've ever talked to does. I, I, I like that one more than Thor The Dark World and Iron Man 2, actually. Wait. I stop, stop, stop. Stop. <laughs> there, there's the first talk and then there's the first talk when you say the first talk do you i mean do you are you going all the way back to uh what's his face the one that was in troy um god what the fuck is his name um eric banna yeah eric banna are you going all the way back to eric banna no no, no. that okay. was not in the mcu so that's actually I've, I've heard that uh that mistake quite a lot the mcu started with iron man in 2008 right right no i got i got you so so you're talking the first one uh with uh, uh ever norton uh, Edward Norton. Okay, right. Now, I, yeah. you know, I like Edward Norton as Dr. Banner. It's a shame that he couldn't cross over. But, I mean, Mark yeah. Ruffalo is really good, too. I mean, you know, come on. But but uh, but you you, you got to give it to my boy, uh, uh, Ed Norton. He's a fantastic actor. I got a he little a tiny man actor. crush on him, maybe, tiny bit. I, you know, I can't blame you for that. Right. <laughs> hmm. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, so, Will, you have said that you have – Every movie yep. in the MCU currently. Oh yeah. Does it, does that include the the Hulk one? No, I'm just kidding. Does, <laughs> not the not the bad Hulk one. The good Hulk one. With that. All right. 
Uh oh. Uh, that's it. So are is there are there all right, I want to ask this. Which movie do you give uh the Raspberry Award for? Do you give the worst? You know, what do you award the worst movie in the MCU? Uh, I think it'd be between Thor The Dark World and Iron Man 2. Like, Thor is one of my favorite heroes, and it made me so sad that his first two movies were some of the weaker ones as a whole in the MCU. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm. And I think Iron Man 2 in general, and I think this is a common complaint that this one has, it just tried to tie itself into two... ...need to make its own movie. Which Warner Brothers has done a lot, too. They've just forgotten to make good movies primarily. Wait, wait a minute, you said you blanked out for the second there. You said it tried to tie itself into into what? Just the larger MCU as a whole, with just the involvement of Nick Fury, just like the, the a lot of the storylines in that one were more focused on tying it into the Avengers instead of just making it a good movie. Right. I got you. Okay, right, right, right. Yeah, I don't know. Mike, what's your least favorite? Uh you know, probably uh this may come as no surprise, but the Hulk movie. Um <laughs> Yeah. But, you know, it was all right. I just, yeah, Edward Norton didn't do it. I When they brought um, whatever is Garofa, Gene Garofa, whatever, <laughs> when they brought him on, I was so happy. Uh, I think he just has done so He does do a energy. really good job with yeah. part. And, and I can't disagree with you, Will, about the uh, direction that the first two um, Thor movies took. They were, the first one was okay. The second one, it had such a great concept. I think if they would have had the formula down, like they got it finally with um, Ragnarok, if they could have yeah. done it in a Ragnarok-esque, but done that same movie, like, oh my God, could you imagine a redo with that? Uh, you know, it would be great because the actual storyline and the plot of that movie was amazing. I it yeah. thoroughly enjoyed it. So, and- But I, I, I can't disagree with you on that. So Thor the Dark World is one of those movies that every time I watch it, I actually like it just a little bit less like the first time i saw it i really loved it because thor did lots of thor things like it was great to see as opposed to his first movie where he was kind of just like a human most of the time this one he was actually like slinging lightning around and battling guys and loki was doing loki things and odin was doing odin things and i was like oh man this is everything i wanted out of a thor movie and then like every time i rewatched it i just kind of like the flaws become a little bit more apparent yeah and and thor came into his own uh in and we're just going to start referencing every movie. Oh, I guess we should just say spoiler alert. If you haven't seen anything in the MCU, <laughs> then get out. Spoilers. Yeah, right. I know. <laughs> get out. But but uh, the the, the uh, first Avengers movie, Thor uh, basically, um, you know, I think he came into his own. Yeah. I, I think it's cool that you can see both his growth as a character, but really like – Chris Hemsworth has very noticeably become more comfortable in the role as the worst yeah. time as time is going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, like the one I just went for as a good example, obviously Ragnarok is a good example too, but I just watched uh, Dr. Strange this past weekend. Okay. And one of the bonuses on that DVD was a team Thor. So, you know, obviously civil war had team Iron Man and team cap, but then they did these shorts where they used to do the one shots, but they did a short with team Thor where he's just living with this random schmuck in, in yeah. Australia or somewhere. I yeah. see. Just like, hey, this is like Hemsworth really coming into the role here. Yeah, that yeah. poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm gonna have to say the Hulk, the 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 Norton Hulk was pretty. I mean, as a movie goes, I'm was, oh God, it has to be the it has to be the lamest of the bunch. Um, you know, but I, I'm gonna, t- I'm gonna say something that's gonna be, you know, you guys are probably gonna disagree with, and I know the the public audience the the regular the 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 standard audience is going to disagree with because the money says otherwise okay so i'm wrong i'm clearly wrong but this is just my taste i honestly i wanted to i wanted to like it but i honestly did not like black panther all that much yeah, it was, it was just, okay yeah. i just i'm it, sorry you cut out p which one was oh, it? oh black panther i didn't like black panther um, as much as everyone else did apparently and i wanted to i i wanted to like it i thought it looked re- the previews and stuff looked really cool but I was like, uh, I came out of it, and I was kind of like, hmm, yeah, it was all right. It was, it was good, but eh. what'd you think? I, was- I I told you the same thing. I, I was telling. I mean, so I'm sorry. I was telling Will the same thing pre-show. Um, I kind of I'm I'm on board with you. It wasn't bad. Uh, I didn't feel like there was enough connective tissue, but let's let Will um, chime yeah. in on that one. 
I actually liked Black Panther. I, I thought it was definitely one of the stronger ones, especially, well, I mean, he didn't really need an origin movie because he kind of had his origin fleshed out fairly well in Civil War, I think. Um, but I, I thought it was very good, and I, I really like the push that they're doing with their villains now. Like, I really feel like, and so the villain of Black Panther, he's probably the best part. Like, Michael oh. B. Jordan didn't have as Killmonger, and I think that and I can't remember which one to start with. It might have started around Ragnarok and a little bit before. It feels like they've finally started to listen to the fans and started to make good villains, which is awesome. Yeah, yeah I, I'll I agree, gotta I'll say, agree Kill with you on that. Totally. Killmonger <laughs> was yeah. the, one of the most believable villains as far as what brought him to where he was and why. Yes, absolutely. I oh, loved yeah. it. And you sympathize, like, and yeah. you should. You should always sympathize with the villain in that you understand why they're a villain because it, it's what keeps them interesting and, and like it, it sets off that internal the same battle that the hero has with you like why doesn't a hero just blow his brains out you know what what it, why why would they even worry about him he's not a person he's just you know just an evil dude and then yeah. but but when you have a feeling for the villain you're kind of like ah oh, you know he's maybe just misunderstood or whatever you know the hero feels the same thing um because they're you know they're immersed in the in the moment mm -hmm. so yeah I, I think I think making a villain kind of like more realistic and and more relatable like vulture holy shit oh vulture yeah. yeah he was, was the a great one greatest villain ever and and michael keaton's a great actor for that too i was really happy when i heard about the casting oh yeah. i loved his batman oh no no you're talking about stop it <laughs> hey, you broke oh. god damn it you broke the rule no dc talk at all <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry listen Try you know, know what triggered me i'm sorry for i gotta call jonathan reinhardt out okay this motherfucker just said in the chat room, he just said that Ant Man was a stupid movie. No, I know. No. So, I, so here's what I say on Ant Man. I'm not a huge fan of Ant Man from the comics, but the movie was really good. I, I mean, I, Paul Rudd, perfect. Paul Rudd, is absolute perfect guy. It was. I mean, it was for what it needed to be. It was great. It was a great like heist movie. And I thought yes. that that was one of the things that Marvel has started to do is realize that, you know what? We could do a Marvel movie that is a love story. We could do a Marvel movie that is a, this kind of story, you yeah. know? Winter a Soldier was a political yeah. thriller. Uh, Ragnarok is like a, a buddy road trip. Yeah. <laughs> a buddy road trip. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Louise, you know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> right. oh one thing God. I will say about Marvel almost across the board, whether you like him or hate him, <laughs> best thing that they have going for them are their casting choices he said he said ant-man is the jar jar binks of marvel no <laughs> I, no you were wrong jonathan <laughs> totally wrong you're so wrong i hate you you're, you're so wrong jonathan you're not even right oh and jay what? libby i swear they're they're just you know what jar jar with herpes come on <laughs> right, ant-man was <laughs> fucking ant-man was great <laughs> We have, we have one of my best friends was that was his favorite Marvel movie so far. Was look, all right, hey, look, because he let, loves the lighthearted atmosphere. Let me ask you something: What else could you do with Ant Man as a movie other than the direction they went? I mean, There's fucking really seriously, you you, ha you can't take a character like him seriously. So that's not. I don't think that's a, that's a character that an audience who is unfamiliar with the Marvel comics is going to appreciate. Right, and that's that's why they went that way with Guard the first Guardians movie. Also, freaking right. Who knew before that the Marvel could make successful a talking tree and a talking raccoon? Oh, dude, when they were talking about Guardians, I was like, they're never going to pull this off. There's no fucking yeah. way they're going to pull this one off. And this it was such a surprise <laughs> match. <hit. laughs> My God, Everyone. it was so good. Okay, all right, all right. While we're on the topic, was Guardians of the Galaxy 2 better or worse than Guardians of the Galaxy 1? And what are your thoughts? Uh, I'm going to say it was worse than the first one. Agreed. Uh -huh. Yes. Part of it was because it was really just the same movie. So I went in with those expectations and they weren't exceeded. They weren't really, I wasn't disappointed, um, but I, I got exactly what I wanted out of it, I guess. Uh, and second, the second reason I think the first one's better is because this one went a little bit too in on the humor. Like there were definitely a couple of points in the movie where it was like, hey, okay, you guys don't have to undercut the dramatic tension on this movie. And yeah. it just did it constantly throughout the movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Paul, Paul, Paul Noon says, Ant-Man, the Phantom Menace. <laughs> No! Stop it! <laughs> this is him. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, jeez, you guys. Oh, all Ant right, Man. so so let let's 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 uh let's go off a little bit. So what do you all right? Let let's let's focus a tiny bit. So we got we got the you know we got the Infinity Gauntlet coming up. Everybody's got to you know Thanos got to have all five stones. Um, yep. 
And um, Vision... Actually, I'm not sure if he will. Well, I'm, he's dead to fill out the Infinity Gauntlet. That's what he's got to do. I'm not sure if we'll get them in this movie. He might not. Oh, but, I don't think he will in this movie, no. I, I okay, agree. But, okay, great, great. But <laughs> he's going to have to get the one from Vision's forehead. So what do you think? What happens to Vision when he yanks that puppy out? Because Vision, I mean, he's still—he's already got his AI. He's, he is a computer. Conceivably, he could still run, right? Yeah, he'll be fine. He so maybe he won't be such a pussy or something. I don't know. <laughs> he'll work as well as most millennials. <laughs> <laughs> what? <No. laughs> Just kidding. Go ahead, Will. What? Uh oh, he's frozen. So, All right, he'll, he'll come back. He'll pop back. There you go. All right, hey, what uh, do you think, Will? Uh, I actually think that Vision's going to survive. Uh, and I think a large portion of that is, I, well, I mean, they, they could do it the other way too, but I think they started this romance between the Vision and Scarlet Wish that they hinted at in the previous two movies that they've shared together. Right. And I don't think that they would completely undercut that by removing that character right now. And the other reason I don't think he'll, he'll get killed is because right now he's one of their heaviest hitters. Like, it's going to be like him, Doctor Strange, and Thor are going to be the only ones who can really stand up to Thanos. Yeah. I mean, Vision is a machine. Well, he's literally a machine. Uh -huh. No, but I mean, he's like, he's, uh, he is, you're right. He's a powerhouse. I mean, he's like Thor level powerhouse, really. Like in the comics, uh, he's gone toe to toe with Thor. Yeah. Well, I mean, Thor's gone toe to toe with a lot of people. And, and like, he's, he's fought Thanos before and come out on top. Like, right. without the gong, of course. Right. Mm -hmm. no, but I was also happy. Oh. Uh oh. He'll, he'll be back. He'll be back in a minute. All right, but we can keep we can keep talking. That's all right. He'll yeah. be back. Here he comes. <laughs> ah, whoa, sorry about that. That was a little... sorry. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's fine. Yeah, so I was a little. So the one thing about Thor is that he was his first iterations were really underpowered for how he's in the comics. Like, I know in the first couple of comics, or the first couple of movies, they're like, oh, he's just a demigod. Like, he's not a full god. Like in the comics, he is just straight up. He is the god of thunder. Right. Uh, and they, they definitely underpowered him a little bit more, but now post Ragnarok, I think he's much more on the power level that he's supposed to be. So that right. makes me really happy. Right. So, you know what? Now's a good time to talk about Thor being as far as whatever, quote unquote, supernatural. He's a god. OK, what does that mean in terms of the physiology? Like, does he just have a healing factor that, you know, can bring him back from death? Or what is his what is a true death for uh, Thor? Uh, he, he definitely doesn't have a healing factor. He's just, like, super tough. Like, I think a, a good scene to highlight this is uh, the first Avengers when Loki first shows up, and then all the dudes are just, like, shooting bullets at him, and they're just kind of, like, bouncing off of him. Like, sure, it could have been his armor, too, but, like, I think that's just a good scene to highlight that, like, no, these Asgardians are really freaking tough. <laughs> right. Yeah, and uh, and Mike, just so you know, I mean, like, if you just if you go back to well, first off, the Valkyrie can die, and they're as guardians, right? And Thor, right. he's he's a prince, but he's I mean, when it comes down to it, he isn't his guardian. And yeah, but he's um, also got like Odin's son, Odin, and I right. know. So he, power of he, Odin. He's, he's got blah, actually blah. two things going for him. One of which they haven't highlighted in the movie, so I doubt that they'll touch on it. So obviously, first of all, he is the Odin son, so he's already got a lot of powers from that. He's he's the god of thunder. Right. Um, second of all, his mother is actually Gaia, so he's got a whole another power set, and so he's a lot tougher than other Asgardians because of that lineage of his family too. So mm -hmm. he's he's got a whole bunch of things going for him that they haven't really highlighted so much in the MCU. What? Which, I mean, it makes sense. You can't you can't get to know to every little nitty gritty thing about the character's history in two and a half hours. So, so so I love Thor Ragnarok, right? But yeah. The one thing I didn't like about it, and it kept bugging me, I couldn't, I just couldn't let it go, is the fact that they made Hela his sister. Mm. And I was like, no, n no. Like, <laughs> I, it just, it kept agitating the fucking shit out of me. Yeah, that is quite the derivation from both the comics and the mythology. Wait a minute. Right, Mike? I mean, that's that's a tragedy. Tragedy. Yeah, yeah. It's a tragedy. <laughs> it's a tragedy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it is. It's both yeah, of those. You you know that I don't know. I know. You have no this. idea what I'm talking what we're talking <laughs> and, about. And, and, but I can I can respect what you're saying because <laughs> it's one of those things where you know it's it's not canon, but it is canon because Marvel says it's okay. And you know, the MCU is and has always been its own set of rules right. and its own its own universe just like listen look you have to be able to say like you know uh there's i can't 
name them off the top of my head because I'm not a comic guru, but there's the Marvel whatever number this. And I mean, I know DC is always better at doing the 2030s and the do number this and number that. But, you know, whatever reboots and, and twists and and series and they they say, well, in this series, this is the case. And in another series, it won't be the case. Deal with it. No, you don't understand. You don't I, understand. I guess I don't. All right, so in Norse mythology. I guess I don't, Mike. I don't, listen, Mike. Mike. I don't get it. Mike. In Norse mythology, Hela is Loki's daughter. So is Fenrir. And so and is so Fenrir is and, and Jordan, it, all those, the big, the, and we didn't see uh, 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 Jordan, is it Jordan Heimer? How do you say that? And we have uh, uh, Jormungandr. Yeah, Jormungandr, that's it. Yeah. So uh, the, I, I don't think we will. And I don't think that was the dragon thing that he killed. No, right? absolutely no. not. Okay. Because not. not nearly Jor big enough. Jormungand is a lot bigger than that. <laughs> right. So, he is the world serpent. So Loki has three kids, right? He has he has Jormungandr, which is the world serpent, which is a snake that can go around the entire earth. There's Fenris. Oh. They showed him the, the wolf. That's one of Loki's kids. And Hal is one of Loki's kids. And I think he has another one that's like Odin's horse, right? With eight yeah. legs or some shit. Right? Slight new. Yes. Oh, okay. Spider Horse. God. <laughs> you, actually, you actually saw him very briefly in the first Thor movie when Odin shows up to rescue Thor from uh, Jotunheim. Okay. When, but, when his horse rears up, you can see that it's got eight legs. But then they had, you know, they had her show up and she's like the sister, the old sister that used to slay people with Odin. I'm just kind of like. So yeah. I, I think. I, and what Mike said earlier, there, there has to be, when you're translating from the pages, whether they're comic pages or novel pages, to the big screen. You have to be able to make some changes. Like, not everything's going to fit. And I think especially with the character that they've established for Loki in the movie so far, it just would not have made any sense for them to have kids. Like, I think it would, it, especially this late in the game with the third movie in the trilogy and this and this late in the phase three, it would have just been a complete blindside out of nowhere. Be like, oh, by the way, Loki's got this daughter. That's, right. like, so as ancient as the rest of them are. Eh, whatever. It is what yeah, it is, right? I, I, I totally get your your compulsion against that. I, I totally understand it, but I, I'm i I'm allowing my suspension of disbelief. To sit in the... You know what I think makes it worse is that I just, like, just a couple months ago, I finished Neil Gaiman's uh, 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 Norse Gods book, and mm. it's so good. And But he yeah. just basically goes into the, the Norse mythology and everything, like, just from beginning to end, and it's just sort of like his own little sort of take on it, except he sticks to the the facts. Uh, anyway, so um, <laughs> sorry, sorry, we can't have Hyman Glavin. And Gl Hyman Glavin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. All right, all right. Yeah, we've got we've got to ask this next question, Pete. Go ahead, ask it. Uh, okay, where's the Soul Stone? Where mm. is the Soul Stone? The soul this stone. is a good question. I am not convinced that it's on Earth. I feel like if it was on Earth, we would have known about it by now. The last possible place it could have been was Wakanda and since that wasn't spoilers since it wasn't in Black Panther uh, right. I don't think that it'll be on that. All right, all right, all right. time out time out then why though is going to be some portion of the I'm in glazing <laughs> <laughs> sorry Paul said I'm in glazing I know I know we did thanks okay. uh, uh, why is a good portion of the Infinity War is going to be in Wakanda though, or why is one battle going to be there hmm. I think um, it could be. It could be. One of the thoughts is that it's buried somewhere in the earth, and whatever, whatever little bit of runoff is causing those flowers to have the powers that they do. I mean, it's conceivable. Yeah, I, I won't rule it out. I'm not going to say no, it's definitely not in Wakanda. I just don't think that it is. Uh, keep in mind, he could also just be in Wakanda because that's where all the heroes are converging to. Like... Uh-oh. Keeping well, that in mind, our, our okay. heroes have. Right. Um, so it could just be like, hey, you know, Doctor Strange and Vision are in Wakanda, so that's where Thanos has to go. And Tony even says in the trailer, hey, we've got one advantage; he's got to come to us. So they right. basically get to pick the battle. Leader. Well, but but why do they have to come to him there? To Wakanda <laughs> because it's yeah. the most technologically advanced nation on Earth. It's got the best weaponry, best way to fight Thanos. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. 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 So, so when they at the end of the the Thor at the end of Thor Ragnarok, there's that big giant ship that approaches, and I'm trying to remember because uh, was that the Guardians of the Galaxy ship? Or... No, that got destroyed. This was definitely Thanos. Ship. Oh, that was this Thanos, Thanos ship. ship. We're pretty sure. For Thanos, sure which yeah. makes oh, sense was. because because we know we know Loki snagged the fucking. Uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. 
Yeah. Well, Cosmic the Tesseract. Or Tesseract, as they're calling it. He did, but there's questions about, well, is he just going to hand it right over, or does he use it as a bargaining chip to save people's lives? There's, you know, it could go. So I actually ways. think it's the latter. I think I think yeah. he's going to use it as an, as a bargaining chip to save Thor and the others. Uh, yeah. And the reason I think this, there is in the second trailer, there is a scene where he's crap. He's you look at it. Proxima okay. Midnight has her spear pointed directly at him, like he's a prisoner, and not like he's actually standing with him. Right. So mm-hmm. there's that scene where he hands it over. I think, especially because of the end of Thor Ragnarok, I legitimately think he's more of a good guy. Not completely a good guy, because Loki can never be a right. good guy. Now, but I think he's more of a good guy than a bad guy. Have time. you have you seen any or heard any of the in the rumor sphere? I'll say that. Uh, Captain America, in some way, shape, or form, could have it. I don't know. The, I have you, not heard anything about that. I have heard no. that. Like, like the reason he, like he was actually going toe to toe with Thanos, and that maybe at some point he had it. And I, I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, it no. doesn't make any sense to me either. That, that that's not going to happen, dude. <laughs> yeah. It's like a booger in his nose. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> Paul Paul Nunn said he should just drop a dinosaur killing rock and get the stones from the ashes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, wait a minute. But there's another. There was another stone everyone was talking about earlier. It was your gallstones. Your gallstones. <laughs> oh, uh, all right. So anyway, so one of the things that we haven't seen. Um, in in the whole like MCU and I, we're not going to see it before Infinity War obviously um, but when do you think when do you think the Netflix series are going to cross over I mean has there been any talk have you seen anything any kind of rumors or echoes or um, you know a- anything around saying that the net any of the any of the Netflix characters are going to make an appearance anywhere in the MCU like on the screen I heard uh, no yeah I, I seriously doubt it the first. It was originally because the guy. So they're they're separate divisions. Marvel Studios does not run into Netflix or Agents of Shield or anything like that. Uh, like I'm sorry if you see any of them, it's not Marvel Studios. It's just the Marvel logo that pops up. Right. Um, so the guys that were in charge of them didn't really get along too well. I don't think. And I can't remember who the guy in charge of the the shows were. Um, but now that Kevin Feige is like solely to Disney now. Like he right. used to have a guy ahead of him that he was flashing with, but he moved on or something. Right. For the MCU, which is great because this is, this is his baby essentially. Um, but I still think like because of the creative differences, they just won't ever happen. Like I, Joss Whedon, for example, has said that as far as the movies are concerned, Agent Coulson is still dead. Okay. Hmm. All right. So one last question, follow up question on that, just for the panel. Who of any in any of the Netflix series, who would you like to see make it to the MCU, make it on the big screen? I'm sorry, I didn't hear your question. Who would you like to see make it to the big screen from the any of the Netflix series? Oh man, I I gotta see Punisher. Yeah. Okay. There there is a great scene in the comic Civil War where uh Cap and his, his heroes are underground. And uh, Spidey is at this point decided to switch allegiances from Iron Man's team to Cap's team. So he's going through the sewers and he's been beating the crap out of by these uh, uh, just a couple super villains. And Punisher shows up and, and saves him and brings the, the Cap to super villains back. And Cap's like, "All right, good. We've got these. We've got these super villains. We've got Punisher. We've got Spidey. We're we're going good." And then Punisher just turns around and just shoots both the super villains right in the head. And Cap's <laughs> like, "What?" What the hell? What? Why did you do this? And Punch is like, they're bad guys. This is what I do. <laughs> and uh, there was a really great scene. So Cap starts to just wail on Punisher, just beat the crap out of him. At one point, he has it up against the wall. He's like, God damn it, fight back! And he's like, No, I'm never gonna fight you, Cap. <laughs> just wow. like that is that is perfect right there. That is character. Right. Uh, who, who do you want to see, Pete? Uh, who do I want to see cross over? <laughs> who would you like scene? to see in Infinity Wars or something? You know what I mean? Like, who would you like to see show up? Um, well, you know, it's funny. God damn it. Because I like Luke Cage a lot, but yeah. he's just a guy who's tough and can hit hard. Of course, most of them are. <laughs> oh, yeah. Gee, that that would that wouldn't be useful. <laughs> right. No, no, no. But no, but it's just like they got a lot of people that can do that already. You know, there's there's I always take more when it's up against Thanos. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I I think against Thanos, like if we're actually going to go up against Thanos, I 
I'm thinking like Daredevil could probably pull some weird thing out with his senses or something. Maybe he would sense the vibration of something or, or something. But, uh, you know, I'm going to say maybe, honestly, maybe Punisher because Punisher is just the kind of guy that can come up with a plan to like, you know, do what no one else will do. Like, yeah. you know, he he's the guy that will, you know, it's like, well, we... He'd say, well, we should do this. And they'd be like, no, you, you can't you can't do that. Right? He's like, yeah, exactly. Do, like, do you want to win? Do that. I will. I'm doing it right now, in fact. Right, right. So maybe the Punisher. Huh. But, I will say that Daredevil probably has some good character interactions with a lot of them, too. Like, he and Spidey do, have, have had some good team-ups over the years. Right. Right. Actually, I, I was thinking Punisher and Spider-Man as a team-up would be great. Yeah, uh, that'd be the, really cool, too. Because they're they're so op and in the comic they've done it in the comics many times, but the 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 difference between those two is like night and day, you know. Oh, yeah. It's it just like it's like the odd couple of superheroes. Hmm. So what do you think, Mike? Who do you want? I would, MCU. Yeah, I would just say uh, just to see how he interacts with everyone else. I think it would be cool to have uh, Luke Cage. Yeah. I, like yeah, I mean, maybe Jessica Jones, but what is she, what is she going to do? You know what I mean? Just well, she's a bar- bartender, whatever. <laughs> uh, Luke Cage is Luke Cage and Spider are actually really tight in the comics too, so that would be yeah. a cool interaction to see on the, on the big screen. Yep. Hey, you yeah. know who I don't want to see? I don't want to see Danny Rand in anything <laughs> ever again. <laughs> and, 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 and you nothing. know what's funny? Like, not Danny Rand, not not the Danny Rand we know from Netflix, but like just. What's his name? Um, uh, Iron Fist himself yeah. would probably be the best person to fight Thanos. Oh, he'd be great. Yeah, he'd I know. Awesome. The, the real shame about that is that Iron Fist is a really cool character in the I, comics. I, yes. I know. They yes. Just, they, they and they just, he is just not it. the character that he is at all. <laughs> I don't know. I recognize <laughs> no. that dude. He's, he's, not, he's not a great, he's not a, he's not a very good actor, first off. I'm the immortal Iron Fist. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And he's, and he's, he, he's not a martial artist. Like you can tell that the, the real person doesn't know how to fight at all. Yeah, like, I think I heard something about, like he learned the choreography like a week or something like that before they filmed their all the scene. It was it's ridiculous. It's funny because like when you're watching, you could tell everybody else on that show can fight better than him. Like in real life, like it's just so obvious. The rest of them are natural. The villains are better than he. Oh is. yeah. Like, how are you? Yeah, like how are you a martial arts? expert you trained in imaginary places behind the wintery whatever's uh, mike <laughs> and you th- can't fight it, it goes beyond that no he so you know how the doctor strange is the sorcerer supreme the greatest sorcerer of all time right danny yeah. rand is supposed to be the, the martial arts supreme yeah. the martial artist supreme right mm-hmm. no nah. Nah. not so much nah. no. they need to throw him down that hole right <laughs> All right, next question. Come on, yeah. let's go. <laughs> All right, so so what do you uh, – let's see. What time – how are we on time? 9.33. Um, bah, 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 bah. I'm going to skip let's, this one, Mike. This is, long, one. this is a yeah, long question. That That's let's going to be a long answer. Do Spider-Man or yeah, – let's do Spider-Man. Man. What do you think, right. Will? Do you think Spider-Man – you think uh, Disney and Sony are going are gonna to be able to keep up the relationship? Uh, I think so. If for nothing else, it's because Sony's like, hey, you're making us a lot of money. Keep right. making us some money. Oh, right. hell yeah. And Sony's like, hey, we're making all this money, and we don't have to make a movie. Like, yeah, exactly. And all the don't... movies they've made have not made the money. Ever since, like, Spider-Man 2 was their last one that actually did well. Like, had yeah. good critical reception, I should say. Because Spider-Man 3 made a lot of opening weekend, and then quickly tanked. Right. Um... And it also is honestly, it's also going to depend on how well the Venom movie does too. Like yeah. if, if Sony can successfully do their own like kind of offshoot of the Spider-Man franchise and have it be and actually do good movies for once, they, I yeah, who knows? I, I, I think the Spidey will stay though. I think I, I don't I think, think Venom. I don't think uh, Venom. So I, I be... really like Tom Hardy, but there was like too... no Venom in that trailer. I don't, I... Like they could have been a trailer for freaking any movie. Yeah, we'll see. It yeah. was so generic. All right, I, but, I'm, I'm scared for that movie. I want it to be good, but I'm scared. Gentlemen, put your hands up if you are excited to see the Iron Spider suit. Come on. Come on. Put them up. Oh, I have a hard on. Peter. 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 What is wrong with you? <laughs> the Iron Spider suit. Do you have any idea what the Iron Spider suit is? Do I? Who's Wilhelm Heimel, Heimel Glavin? Do you what know what you're talking to? Of course I know what the Iron Spider suit is. <laughs> I'm just not. I've never been a big fan of it. 
Look, I'm still bitter. All right, I'm. You know, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna put my old pants. Let me put my old man pants on. Back in my day, I'm gonna go back into my old man pants, and I'm gonna say when Spider-Man came home from Secret Wars and he had the black outfit. And the fans were pitching a goddamn fit. I loved that fucking. I was like, "Oh my god, this is the coolest outfit ever!" And I love the fact that it could like he could do like short sleeves and he could hide his camera in it and blah 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 and all the stuff that he could do, right? And then, I I swear I think it was retconning. I think Marvel was like, "Oh crap, the fans don't like it. Let's turn it into this creature and turn it into Venom and stuff." I. Don't know that Venom was always part of the plan. Maybe it was, but I was like, God damn, why'd they get rid of that costume? I'm so mad. <laughs> but then, like, now it has a huge following. They actually brought it. He's worn it all. What's this? Wait a minute. What's this? So, so Spider Man has been wearing that costume in the comics? The black costume? He's not currently wearing it, but he's worn it off and on. Really? Uh, yeah, I, I believe. I can't remember. The, it's within like since the, in the 2000s sometime he, he picked it back up again like without the venom symbiote like he, it was just like a, a like a fabric costume but it was like his black outfit though and i huh. think it, it might have been around the time of the civil war but it could be wrong right right or, or secret invasion or something like that it was around that era david benavides wants to see spider gwen oh i do too oh i, I, I oh i love spider gwen spider gwen yes. Mike knows Spider Gwen because he plays her in uh, Contest of I Champions, think Marvel right? Contest of Champions, yes. <laughs> One of my favorites. <laughs> hey, fuck you, man! I love calling Mike. Out. Mike's like, yeah, I'm talking all this Marvel shit, right? Yeah, it's all from Contest of Champions. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> no, I know, it's not I know. All for that. <laughs> fuck you, man! <laughs> That's funny. Oh, Iron Spider forever. Right. Right. I want to see uh, Iron Strange. No, seriously. All right, so Iron. so Fantastic Four, right? Do you, now that now that they're back home again, oh, which they no. but they haven't done anything they're, with them yet. They're in the process of finding. They're oh. working on. They're working on. Just, hold, just let let hey dead dogs lie. Hold it, <laughs> hold it. All right. I'm not the biggest Fantastic Four fan. I don't hate them, but I'm not the biggest fan of them. I never really liked the comics. Never really like was into them, but. I think they've never been given a fair shot. I think they've been given shitty scripts, shitty, like, like just crap oh, yeah. all around. And I don't know how anyone could screw up Dr. Doom. I don't know. <laughs> like, I'm just like, how? He's a <laughs> fucking simple. He's he, not once, but twice. <laughs> he is a regular. I mean, he is like when you were a cookie cutter villain, Dr. Doom. It's perfect. So easy to do. And they keep wanting to, like, give him, like, electrical powers and turn him into. <laughs> I'm like, what? no. You know? you know, they almost can't do the Fantastic Four at this point. I don't, I don't know if you saw this meme going around the, the internet or anything like that. But there was a meme where it was like, well, the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe has now successfully redeemed two out of two human torches. <laughs> oh, God. No. So if, they do, if they do another Fantastic Four, they'll just have to redeem, redeem that human torch too somehow. And it just it wouldn't be done. Yeah. Well, we'll see. I, I think there's a possibility that. Well, it's uh, absolutely a possibility. Yeah. That, that, they, so, they could bring more X Men into it too. There's also yeah. now that they're getting the X Men back, we could yeah. see Black Panther and Storm together, which would be awesome. Okay. Right. I forgot about those two. I, so, in in the uh, genre of of uh, Fantastic Four, who are your favorite kind of characters? Whether it's from the four or just uh, other surrounding supporting characters. Villains well, if we're talking about four, then the uh, the Silver Surfer is indelibly tied into. Uh, yes, they're uh, just like yes! I gotta, I gotta go with the Surfer. Yes, and yeah. I'm really sad that they're not gonna get him in time for Infinity War. I know. Though maybe they'll have him in time for Avengers Four. We never right. know. Well, we never know. Awesome. You know, Mike. Honestly, Mike, my favorite is Mr. Fantastic Stretchy Guy. Yeah. No, I just always thought that was a boring power. I'm kidding. I just, I'm kidding. I don't. Okay. Oh, I, I would believe it. <laughs> no, no. My favorite was when She-Hulk joined Fantastic mm. Four. Uh, She-Hulk is badass. I like She-Hulk a lot. Mm. Did you guys know that apparently at one point there was a thing called the New Fantastic Four that was comprised of Spider-Man, Hulk, Ghost Rider, and Wolverine? <laughs> no, right, but so I'm... next question. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, 
So, well, I, just to speak, we got so we got X Men coming back, and we may see something from them before long. But I think they're going to hold off on that a little bit. But yeah. uh, what do you think is going to happen with with the the Deadpool slash X Men? I'm calling that the X Pool franchise. You think like like all right? So if you had to guess, if you just had to guess, will it be? Uh, an X Men reboot with say new actors for the characters because they're kind of going to have to do that. They maybe even pick different characters, um, or are we looking at maybe uh, X versus A? Maybe. So that's a possibility. They'll definitely reboot all the characters. That would be neat. Yeah, that'd, that'd be really cool. cool. They don't reboot all of them, but no, I, I don't think they can have the same actress for any of them because they're like what Fox has done with that universe is just so. Nope. True. Yeah. The only character you would not have to reboot would be Deadpool, and that's just because of the nature of who that character. You is. can't re you can't reboot Deadpool, man. He's he's also, got also it. He's you can, no one else can play that except Ryan Reynolds. Oh, Ryan yeah. Reynolds yeah. nailed. That'd be it. like casting someone else as Tony Stark. He is set yeah. for life. He is. He's even said, "I'm fine. I will be typecast forever." <laughs> <laughs> Deadpool is him. <laughs> yeah, 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 pretty fine. much. So. All right, all right, so, can, so what I'm thinking, all tons of jokes about being like, "Oh, am I in a different universe now? What's going on with this?" It's a great right. Green Lantern pool. Yeah. So, so here <laughs> we go. You know what I would like to see? I would love to see. I would love to see the X Men franchise come back, and they do, um, they do Star Jammers, like they go into space, do the Star Jammer stuff with the with the Brood. Holy yeah. shit! A three arc series, you know, fighting the Brood would be phenomenal. Yeah, that would be really cool. Because you could cool. bring the scroll in and the all them. So yeah. the scroll they're already bringing in, because the scroll are going to be the villains in the Captain Marvel movie. Oh, are they? What? They okay, are. good. Yeah, that makes sense. That I totally mean, makes sense. They, they're yeah. going to have to change it around. Then it's not going to be where all the X Men end up being scroll and some weird yeah. wacky shit like that, right? Yes, uh, Pete. I know they that. could do that. Maybe the Captain Marvel movie. Oh yes, Pete. I know about that. <laughs> They could be here for decades, and we just don't know. I, and oh, who knows? Oh, you know what? Go. It could be Hydra. Could be Scroll. What? They could be. Well, see, there there was a whole storyline where they did Hold that, on, and they could we'll, they could they could do that at any time. Marvel could have yeah. a movie come out and go, oh, all these people were imposters. Yeah, yeah. So, it's so my thinking though but, is, yeah. they've been they've been. Um, teasing for a while dark phoenix and i yeah you know i wonder if they'll continue to go down that road because i mean that was that was fox's plan but but that was fox's plan now they're owned by disney will it Soon-ish. will it stay with that or will they go with it what do you think uh it depends really on the specifics of the deal like the deal that's going through there might just be a thing that says hey this movie's almost done so this is going to theaters and too bad but right. after that, you get the answer. And I wouldn't be surprised if that would be the case regardless. So All I'm right, pretty well, sure that's... we got yeah. time for one more. One more, real quick. So phase four... And then we're going we're gonna to talk about your book real quick, and then we got a game to play. So phase four. So we've got... Um, you know, phase four, everything's going to change, right? So at right. the end of Infinity War... And I don't know if it's, it's Avengers 4 is going to be the change... It's going to be before the change, right? Because then it's Guardians of the Galaxy 3, which is going to be the first movie in Phase 4, right? Is my understanding. Right. So, 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 so there's still a good number of movies yet. Captain Marvel comes out still, right? Yep. So we got so, Avengers of Infinity War, Ant-Man and the Lost, Captain Marvel, and Avengers 4. So so what we're, what they're calling Avengers 4, which they said that the name's going to change. It's not going to be Avengers 4. It's not going to be it's not going to be what really it was. They won't release a spoiler for Infinity War. Right. They this said that the sense. name itself would spoil the right. movie. My guess... Which is very interesting. My guess... <laughs> I'm going to throw it down, put my nickel down. My guess is Secret Wars. That would be cool, but I don't see how that would be a spoiler for Infinity War. Hmm. Because it could just be its own storyline. It could be, and, but Avengers Four may it, not. Infinity War I, may be may wrap up. I thought of Avengers Disassembled also. Okay, but again, that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with Infinity War. So I think they said that they're two separate movies, but they have to have some kind of link between, like some strong, like stronger than any of the other movies. Have. Like it's almost going to be like a sequel, like all either a two part movie or or direct sequel. Because mm-hmm. there's also no reason why they would release them like only a year apart. I know how you tie it together. The Beyonder steps in and stops Thanos and then sets up the Secret War. Bam! Yeah. We can get out there, Mike. That's going, huh? Uh, no. 
No. Okay. <laughs> Just, I don't know. You know how I feel. I mean, well, everyone should feel issues with all of the Omega powered beings coming into the MCU. I mean, there's no reason for them. It just huh. that it kills it. Come on, it would just kill it. Hey, we got all right. So we got two things. Uh, David wants to see Squirrel Girl, um, <laughs> well, and then Jonathan. Jonathan was asking tastes. about. Uh, Lantern Core. They Lantern, said that they Lantern. were. I thought they were abandoning the Phase Three grouping after Three. They might be. Yeah, that's the okay. well, they, They've said that Kevin Feige has come out and said that it's going to completely change how they go about doing their formula. Okay. So it could just be a series of just independent movies from after Phase Four. Who knows? And and Paul, so Paul mentioned something about the Micronauts. I would love, oh, I would love for the Micronauts, but uh, we have a big barrier in that Hasbro has it, and they want to combine mm. Micronauts and I think GI Joe and Transformers or some shit all into one franchise <laughs> or something. It's like the toy, the toy trans, uh, the the toy franchise. But that would not stop the Marvel thing from happening if they struck the right deals and all that kind of stuff. But I would love to see Ant-Man and the Wasp at the end of Ant-Man and the Wasp, they wind up in the microverse. That would be the huh. fucking shit. Because they shrink, that be really cool. that shrink down thing and they wind up in the microverse and then Ant-Man 3, Wasp 2, whatever, uh, is them <laughs> in uh, in the microverse and it's like the Micronauts movie. Like, it wouldn't even have to be their own movie. They could just be in Ant-Man 3. I mean, that, that's huh. possible. Okay, Ant Man would say he'd say I'm a giant in the micro world. <laughs> I, I got. I feel like I just want to do one really quick last question. I hate this. What character in Marvel that's not that's not a uh, Omega level do you want to see brought into Marvel now? That's our. That could be brought in legally in the MCU. Real I, quick. I, I think I have to go with my my pre, my answer to your last question and go with the Surfer. Silver Surfer. All right, I like that, and and I'm going to support you on that. And I am going to say, in uh, I'm going to say instead, then, uh, God, who was it that I was just thinking of? Oh, Howard the Duck. I want them to bring Howard no. the Duck back. No, as a power. I want yeah, you to as, punch as, yourself as in the dick. No, come on, you, you, dude. <laughs> in, when when he's got his fucking like his no. little duck mobile and all that shit, no. he's fucking badass. All right, you should see him in in um how he works. How he punch works yourself in the dick. Contest of champions. Right. Yeah. No. Come on. All right, all right, who do you want, tough guy? I want Beta Ray Bill. All right. Oh, Beta that would be cool. My brother and I were actually talking about that recently, how they could break him in. Because he's in the universe. Like, he fought at, at uh, the Grandmaster yeah. Stadium. He was, at the, he was a grand champion. That's true. Yeah. Yep. I all right, my, all right. Pete, I want motherfucking Beta Ray Bill. Pete, grab yeah. the reins, man. Grab okay, sorry. Reins. Sorry. Okay. All right, so that's it for the for the Marvel discussion. Uh, Will, let's. you haven't talked about your novels at all yet. Let's do that. Let's, let's spend just a few minutes... Uh, what, what are you writing? What do you got? Uh, so actually, it's it's available on Amazon as of today. A new book called The Blade of Straya, which is uh, kind of like a more sci-fi type novel. Um, <clears throat> it's almost like a kind of like a mystery, but it's basically the, the premise of it is is that um, they find out that their universe, well, their their galaxy rather, is about to die because the goddess that was like the Basically, what held all magic together, she's on her way out, and with her, all magic and all life is going to be extinguished with her. So it's basically exploring what, how all of these different characters respond to the actual, and not like our, you know, not like our world where there's a different apocalypse every other week, but like the actual, like impending apocalypse. Like things are literally falling apart, people are dying, everything's just decaying. Um, right. So it's delving a lot into the mindset of that. Um, so that, that is available on Amazon as of today. So you can actually just go on there and type in Starburned Blade of Strix. So actually, so I, I wrote it with, uh, this group called Offshoot Comics, which is, uh, based over in California. And that's who I actually published my last novel with too, uh, which was entitled Secret Service. So this, which is, which is a really cool series. And I, I definitely suggest everyone looking at Offshoot Comics Starburn. So I think it's got a really awesome premise. Okay. And basically, the, the, my novel is kind of like the history of one of the factions that is is in that series. Okay. Cool. Cool. And then, um, did you had another? You did another book there. You did a fantasy book too, right? Yeah. So I'm working on a high fantasy novel right now. That's the one I want to try to start looking for an agent for at this point. Uh, I, I've been working on this one for probably about eight or nine years at this point. I started my senior year of college for my uh, independent study course. And I've been just slowly honing over the years, taking breaks every once in a while. So I, I wrote those two two works for Offshoot, 
So I had to kind of put on hold to, to work on those. Um, but yeah, that's, it's definitely at the stage where I want to start looking to try to get it like officially published somewhere. And I've gone the self publishing route before and it hasn't worked out for me. So I want to try to go the agent route. This Pete, time. Pete, who's, yeah. uh, who's Paul Cooley's publisher again? Severed Press, but they don't do fantasy. So, so when you go when you go with a, a a publisher, they have to be a publisher that promotes that type of story. So right. Will needs to find a high fantasy publisher, and Will, I'm going to work on that. And anyone watching this show, if anybody's watching it, because we have authors and stuff that come on the show a lot and watch it. Um, if you if you're in if you write for high fantasy or you're a high fantasy publisher or you know someone's a high fantasy publisher. Uh, and you think Will could get representation, please uh, make sure to email us at mythwits at g- gmail.com and just uh, just mention that and I'll, I'll hook it all up. But but I'm going to I'm going to look for you because I know a bunch of people and I'll ask around. Um, I, there's one guy I'm thinking of in particular. I'm not going to say his name on the show right now, but because I'm going to call him out. But uh, but I'm going to I'm going to email him because I know he writes fantasy. So I'll, great. Uh, hey, I, I really appreciate him. that, sir. And he's he's not local, but he's in. Um, uh, damn it! I want to keep wanting to say Pittsburgh, not Pittsburgh. Um, Mike, where do we where do we fly out of? Uh, Philadelphia. Philadelphia, that's the city. Yes, the other P in Pennsylvania. So Philadelphia. He, I think he lives in Philadelphia. Uh, and cool. I can also we can also ask our friend uh, uh, Violet Lavoie. Uh, she oh, knows yeah. a lot. Of, she knows a lot of authors and stuff. So or and cool. and so she might have some connections somewhere. We'll we'll get you. We'll get you hooked up. So we'll we'll do what we can. All right. So check out Will's stuff. Starburned, right? Starburned, Blade of Straya. Blade of Straya. Cool you know, I looked. I, I was looking that up, and of course, I hadn't realized that that was the, that was the one that's not out yet. And um, I found Starblaze in some other book, right? They already have a different one out, a different storyline out, I think. Uh, well, they they did. So they went to WonderCon this past weekend, and that's where they debuted. So that's why it's called like Starburned is like the first part of it. And then Blade of Straya is kind of like almost a subtitle type of thing. Okay. Um, but it's in the Starburn series. Gotcha. Okay. Got that. Right. And got to break in really quick. Paul Cooley, who <laughs> again is in our chat room because we're is so he? awesome. He yeah. said that Severed is actually doing fantasy now. So whatevs. Oh, all right. Paul. Hey, Paul. You and me, buddy. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna hit you up. I'm gonna hit you up and see if see if we can't get Will a deal. Maybe, possibly, maybe. Paul does not control that. He just knows them. Yeah. So he knows not, people. I, knows people. I'm, but I'm we not know putting people Paul on the knows. spot. I'm just gonna, you know. <laughs> Seth, I'll put him on the spot. Anyway, so <laughs> all right. So let's play a game. Let's do. Uh, let me do. Da, ba, da, ba, da, da, da. Let me do this thing here right here. Oh, and then do this. And And it's game time with the Mythwits. I'm your game master, Peter Bryant. And on this episode, we are playing Bet the Geek. I have pulled questions about Marvel Comics and the MCU directly from Cube of Death. Each round, I will ask Will a trivia question. Before he answers, Mike and I will determine whether Will will get the answer correct or get it wrong. Mike and I must also hedge that bet by one, two, or three points based on how confident we are in Will's Marvel Foo, which I think we have established is pretty good so far. Once all the betting is in, Will will reveal his answer. God damn it. Willie <laughs> will, will or Willie won't? Willie will Willie will, 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 will. There will be... There's a lot of wills in this in this reading. There will be a total of five questions, and Mike and I will start with ten points. Mike will be manning the scoreboard and will keep uh, will update us at the end of each round. Uh, we'll start with three warm up questions to help us gauge Will's abilities. Good luck, everybody. It's now time to bet the geek. All right, let me pull this over here. There's the scoreboard up. All right. Um, okay, so Will, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you three questions. You can answer these right away, and then the okay. rest of the questions, you got to wait for Mike and I to bet. Okay. Okay, so here's your first question. Who uh, wields Mjolnir and is later given its equal, Stormbreaker? Okay, Beta Ray Bill. Fantastic. All right, yeah, I knew you'd know that one, especially since I hinted to it already. Um <laughs> Which Infinity Gem is featured in the film Guardians of the Galaxy? Be the Power Gem. Absolutely correct. All right. Third question. Name four members of the original Sinister Six. Oh, lost him there for a second. 
Go ahead. We lost you for a second. Start oh. over. Uh, Doc Ock, Shocker, Rhino, I think. And I want to say Vulture, but I'm not sure that's correct. I'll, I'm going to stick with Vulture, though. Okay. Well, you're about half right. So, ah. Dr. Octopus, Mysterio, Electro, Craven the Hunter, Sandman, and Vulture. Wait a minute. Scorpion was, too. I, no. I almost named Scorpion, actually. No, the Wasn't original oh, Sinister oh, yeah. Six. Sorry. There okay. were Yes, there were a lot of Sinister Sixes. There was a Sinister yeah. 66 or some shit. I don't know. That's why I went with, that, with the original. Okay. <laughs> All right, so here we go. We're going to play the game now. All right. So your first question, remember, don't answer this one until Mike and I bet. Uh, what term of affection does Mary Jane call Peter Parker? What term of affection? So, uh, good. Mike. Keep your face frozen as if the screen was frozen. Very All right. good. All right. So, Mike. Yes. I'll let you go first. Uh, that is. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, don't uh, tell me what it is, but bang. Oh, okay. I'm not supposed to tell you. you tell me if you think he's going to know it or not. Yeah, I know. Well, it, are you sure? Because you just said don't tell you. No, don't tell me the answer. No, I know not. To, oh my god! <laughs> really? Really? <laughs> wow, Peter. Wow. No, go uh, ahead. Yes, what? three. He knows it. You jackass. Okay. Uh, are you betting my? You put my points in or your points? Oh well. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll. I guess I'll put. Yeah, what are, gonna, what just, are you going to say? I'm going to say yes for three. <laughs> oh, good, good. I, I knew that. I looked into the future, and I knew that. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, Will. What does what does Mary Jane Parker call, or what does Mary Jane call Peter Parker? Tiger, you just hit the jackpot. There you go. Fantastic. All right. Perfect. All right. Question number two. It's uh, tied thirteen to thirteen. Yeah, yeah. They can see this, the, the. They can see it. Um. What does Black Widow call her wrist-mounted energy weapons? And I'll go first on this one. Uh, Mike, I'm going to say no for two. Could you repeat the question for me? Sure. What does Black Widow call her wrist-mounted energy weapons? Okay, so you're thinking that he does not know this. That's correct. That would be a no. No for two. Come on. No for two. And mm -hmm. I'm going to say yes for two. Oh, all right. Okay. Now we're playing. All right, Will. Swing one the other. What, what, does, what does Black Widow call her wrist-mounted energy weapons? I believe that is the Widow's Bite. God damn it. Yep, that's correct. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Yes. <laughs> I, I have a hard time remembering if it's Bite or Sting, but Spider right. don't Sting, so that doesn't make sense. Very good, very good. I thought you were gonna say sting too. I oh, thought you, I knew you were gonna have an idea. I just didn't. I was hedging that. I was hoping that you wouldn't get it completely right. All right, uh, all right. So question number three: What is Galactus's original name? Galactus's original name. Uh, Mike, it's your turn to go first. Hmm. Galactus's original name. Now, now is that supposed to be like before? Like when, like his birth name, yes. or was that his, like? Yes, it's his not, birth not name. Not his name before he became Galactus, because a lot yes. of people don't know that he had three names oh, before okay. he was Galactus. All right, uh, I'm uh, I'm gonna say yes. I'm not as I'm not as confident, but I'm gonna say yes for one because uh, that's what I'm gonna say. <laughs> yes for one. You know, this is this is a this is like a key Marvel fact, but not a lot of people know about it because they don't really talk about it very often. It was like, you know, it was in his origin story and then it's just really not mentioned too much anymore as far as I know. So, uh, man, but Will is like a fucking Marvel savant. Oh, a lot of people are like dubious in the chat room. Just I'm saying. I'm going to say uh, no for one. No. For one, Willem, right, Will. what do we got? I think two. I believe his name was Gallon. God damn it! Yes, that's correct. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta stop betting against you, man. All right. All right. So you were wrong. Yes, and I, I was, wrong. was right. All right. Shit. Uh, Peter, okay. Peter, the score is ten to sixteen. I, I just thought yeah. I'd let the listeners know that. <laughs> yeah, I see that. I see that for audio for our audio listeners, right? All right. Yes. So now, for all listeners, right. so and viewers, everyone, 
Uh, all right. So what country does Dr. Doom rule over? Oh, come on. I mean, <clears throat> no way he's going to know this, right? Right, right Pete? Who the fuck would know that? Right. Huh. Right. Well, what do you say, Pete? I have to go first. Did you go first last time? Yes, I yes, did. Yes, you did. God damn it. <laughs> yes for three. Yes for three, huh? Mm-hmm. Oh. How does it feel to ride on a bandwagon? <laughs> I going, say, yeah, I yes. say for three. I heard. <laughs> Go ahead, Will. Uh, as soon as you said which country, I knew what question you were going to ask. In the right? area. Yes, 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 yes. Of course, of course. All right, all right. <laughs> last question. Last question. All right. So, how did car cap uh, carbon? How carbon? Car- car- how did Captain the original, the first, the first? Captain Marvel. How did the first Captain Marvel die? Mike, you have to go first. So how did the first Captain Marvel die? Is this, uh, just out of curiosity, but from my own knowledge, this is Carol it's, Davers, right? No. No. This is, this is the Cree guy, Marvel. His name was actually oh, Marvel. Right. He's going to be portrayed by Jude Law in the movie. Oh, nice. Uh, okay. Mm. Well, since he knows that, I'm going to say <laughs> yes for three. <laughs> Welcome to my web. Oh. <laughs> well, all right. So here's matter? the thing. It doesn't matter, Pete. It doesn't. I'm, yeah, I can't. I could tie you. I could tie you. So I'm going to say no for three. All right. Hey, game theory. Game theory. I'm going to lose either way. I'm either going to lose or I'm going to tie. And the only way I can even, the only way I can't lose is, uh, is by the bet this way. All right. So, so Will. Go ahead. Let me know. That the I'm first a little record. rustier in this one. I think it was like a heart disease or something. Oh, he didn't know this one. Huh. Cancer. He died of cancer. Oh, cancer. I knew it was some kind of like illness well, or something. It was, exactly uh, what it, was. it was it was heart cancer. So, you know, <laughs> it's a disease of the No, no it's not. Okay. <laughs> All right. I got to think I I am going to try I want to try and tie, I want to try and do a win um tiebreaker uh let me think of a marvel a marvel question it's not like ridiculous because i knew some ridiculously hard ones oh no wait a minute all right i i got that wrong i recorded this wrong so it is now tied 16 to 16 yeah, 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 yeah. I, I gotta think right, let me think of a marvel question real quick that that is uh t- tiny bit up oh, obs you bastard hmm. reconnect it's reconnecting all right, I gotta think of a Marvel. You know what's funny about that, Mike? It like oh. the lag. You don't even notice it in the video. Like right. it, our streaming software disconnected and reconnected, but the audience will never even know it happened. It's funny. Well, they will now. They will now. They yes. Will. Um. Uh. Wow, what's a good one? Um. Man, see now, now I'm drawing a blank. Um. All right, I'll just I'll just throw one out there. Um, okay, what what was the first Marvel superhero? The absolute first Marvel superhero. Don't answer yet. Mm. And I'll go first. I'm gonna. Oh shit! See, Mike, we're both gonna say no, and right because it's gonna be hard. Uh, well, can you? Can you clarify, like, is it having to do with, when you say the first Marvel superhero, you mean, like, that appeared in the comics or that yes. appeared in the MCU? All right, so we're talking about the comics. Right. We're talking about way back in 1800-something uh, or other when Stan Lee was born. No, we're talking about basically what which comic he, what what, what hero appeared first. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, who's, who's going first? That's you. That's me. All right. Well, I will say that he knows this for two. Really? All right. I'm going to say. And I'm going to even call my shot. He's going to guess and get it right. <laughs> He's going to guess and get it right. Okay. I'm because gonna that's say, what I'm going to do. I'm going to say. I'm going to say no for uh, for two. There's no way he's going to know this one. Because like when I heard this for the first time, I was like, "What?" And I'm going to pull this up. Just, uh, just so, because I, I have a document that has this answer in it. All right. I want to read the answer. 
Okay, so go ahead, Will. What do you think? Who do you think is the first Marvel superhero? Well, I know it wasn't any of their big guys, as in, like, not Spidey, Iron Man, or Cap and Thor, or any of them. I'll give you a hint. I wanna... It's not. You're right. You are right about that. I'll give you a hint. You are right. <laughs> you are, no, he's really, it's really not one of their big upfront heroes. The only answer I, I can really think of, um, I'm almost positive this is wrong, is the Fantastic Four. I mean, obviously, you know, it's Marvel's first family. Um, but I know that they were one of their earlier hits, too. Uh, how can I... No, no, no. But that's also not a singular hero. So that might automatically disqualify them. Right, I'm going to help Mike out on this one. I'm going to help Mike out on this one in that you are fucking... That you're hot. Hmm. <gasps> I would have been completely was it, wrong. Um, it wouldn't. It wouldn't have been the original Human Torch, would it have been? God damn it! He got it right. That's right. Yes. Oh, nice. Yes. Nicely nice. done. Nicely done. God damn it. Yes. But he Excellent. was. He was the Human Torch, but he was called Toro, and he was a robot. Right. So Who was? He was referenced in the first Captain America movie, actually. Nice. Very good. Very good. Very good. Hey, Mike. Wow. You know what you get? Yes, please give it to me. Mike is a big winner. Uh, the smell of victory. I haven't had it for a while. It smells good. It smells good. It's so good. All right. It's like one of my own farts. It just smells so good. <laughs> uh. All right, Will. Thanks for coming on, everybody. Yeah, make thank sure you guys for having me. Make sure you go and check out uh, all of Will's good stuff. He's got a new comic out today on Amazon. Um, and you can find all of Will's stuff. And you can find just this is how you interact with Will. Go to Facebook forward slash Will W I L L Conway C O N W A Y Literature L I T E R A T U R E, and you will find Will's Facebook page. And I'm sure you're talking about it on your Facebook page like crazy, right? Will? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you cut it out. Oh, you, you're talking about this, uh, your your release on Amazon uh, like crazy, right? I'm sorry, you, you cut out again. <laughs> okay, Blade of Blade of Straya on Amazon.com, yes. right? Correct, yep. Yep, if you, if you search it, and Straya is, Straya is spelled S-T-R-E-Y-A. Go check yep. it out. Uh, I, I saw some pictures from the from from the uh, Maze Con, Wonder Con, which con? WonderCon. WonderCon. And uh, it looked pretty cool. It looked pretty cool. So um, so go check it out. And that is gonna do it for the show. Let me uh, let me damn it, let me run the closer. Um, I got too many things going on here. Sorry folks. Uh, here we go. You've just enjoyed another awesome episode of the Mythwits. Uh, we're live on Facebook Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Please, Eastern time, Eastern time. Please ask our guests questions or just banter with the other myth fits in the room. There was a ton of people in the room talking. It was a great time. If you miss our live show, you can always catch the Encore episodes on Facebook or YouTube. Find us on Facebook and Twitter as Mythwits and check out Mythwits.com. If you don't have time for videos, make sure to, to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher, something like iTunes or whatever you listen to. Stitcher or hey Mike what's uh what's the Android version uh, uh what <laughs> never mind if you don't have time uh I say, do like follow subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate and make sure to share your favorite episode on social media to help spread Mythwits over the entire planet Mythwits is part of the TSR podcast network check out tsrpn.com for more cool shows uh, Mythwits is also a Creator Commons product. Like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it, don't sell it, and don't put it into a gauntlet and kill half the universe with it. Make sure to <laughs> check out Studio187.com for more cool stuff and join our mailing list. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Tell your friends, tell your friends to tune in. And until next week, Mike? The Eggplant Stone. The, oh, God, the Eggplant Stone. And that's it. We're out. All right, Will. Thanks for coming on. Good time, man. Yeah, thanks for having me.